So yeah, I'm going to be talking about networks, but I'm also going to be talking about clouds. Uh, if you don't see the link between the two, uh, there's not much of one. I came up with quite a tenuous one. It's mainly just that pictures of clouds are nicer than pictures of networks. Um, so examples of networks. Transport networks, you want to get from A to B as quickly as possible. So does everyone else. Uh, we can create a network out of this, and we want that network to be as efficient as possible. Um, other examples include disease networks. So if you're ill, uh, maybe it's contagious, and you come into contact with some people, and those people come into contact with some other people, and so on. That's a network, and that's one that we want to try and keep as small or disconnected as possible. The internet is an obvious example of a network. Uh, there are all sorts of things we want to know about the internet. Uh, for example, if some terrorist organization tried to take down some, some chunk of the web, would the rest still function properly? <coughs> okay, so how do we design a network? Well, the simple answer to this question is that usually we don't. Um, so take the, the measles outbreak in Wales recently. There was no one deciding who was going to, to, to come into contact with whom and who was going to get measles. So normally networks just appear, and then we have to try and control them as best we can. And that's where the cloud analogy comes in, because there's no one going around making sure that clouds are all the right shape. Right? So, so why, is it that, why is it that all clouds sort of have this distinctive flat bottom shape that you see here? Well, it's, it's just because each, water, each tiny little water molecule knows um, sort of the temperature and the pressure and it maybe knows how many other molecules are around it, and it reacts to this local information. But this local behavior leads to the global structure of the clouds that we see. It's the same for networks. If you want to control the global structure of your network, the only way to do that is by controlling the local rules. And if you can get a grip, so, so what we want the maths to do, or in my case, probability theory, because I'm a probabilist, is to tell us which local rules lead to which global structures so that we can get a grip on controlling our network. So an early example of this was these two guys, uh, Galton and Watson, were interested in the 1870s in um, why certain surnames survived and certain surnames went extinct. And uh, so family trees are an example of a, of a network. And what they discovered was that if you want your surname to survive, you should follow the simple local rule, have more than one son. <laughs> Okay, this is a simplification, but uh, actually they've hit on quite a powerful idea that if you want your network to be big or well-connected, you should make sure that every vertex or node or person in your network has, on average, more than one connection to other vertices. So another example is if we take some crystalline material uh, and model it by a grid of atoms that can, that can link to atoms above them or to their right, or both with, with chemical bonds, for example, then if atoms on average have less than one bond, we get lots of little disconnected bits and the thing crumbles, like on the left. Whereas if we even have slightly more than one bond per atom, then we get a big, strong, connected material. Pause for breath. <laughs> okay, so the, this, this stuff that I've already told you um, was known quite a long time ago. The thing that makes networks exciting to work on now is that there's just so much more data suddenly available. It's much easier to get a picture of, of what your network looks like. So here, for example, is a picture of the internet. And one thing we can notice from looking at this picture is that there are a few nodes that just have loads and loads of connections, whereas most nodes only have a few. And that's something we didn't see in the networks before. So what local rule is it that's leading to this behavior? Well, if we go back to the surnames example, if you want your surname to survive, you can, at least to a certain extent, uh, control how many children you have. Okay? So you can keep churning out as many kids as possible, but you can't decide in advance how many children your children are going to have. Whereas on the internet, if you want your website to be popular, you can link to pages that are already popular. This is essentially how Google decides which page you want to visit. This is the heart of its algorithm. And it turns out that that extra local rule does give the property that we see here, that a few nodes have loads of connections, whereas most of them don't have many. Okay, so that was a very short introduction to, to some probability. Um, so if you didn't realize that before that clouds and measles and the internet were, and probability theory, of course, were related, hopefully now you do.
Thanks a lot.